emotional consideration paid for by the following. This is awesome! This is awesome! Hello and welcome once again to Cheap Shot Entertainment. I'm your host Luke and this is another retro review for Cheap Shot Entertainment for WWE 2000. Because we're going through the year 2000, it's been 20 years since the year 2000, since the Millennium Bug and all that kind of stuff, so why not go back and watch some quality wrestling? There's some stinkers in there, but most of it is very much quality and really, really cool. So this is Backlash now, the literal backlash from WrestleMania 2000, or 16 in old money if you're counting. And it was on the 30th of April 2000, recorded at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. That is the capital of America, if you're keeping score on that one. And just got to say, first, the set is awesome. It was, really reminds me of back in the 2000s when every set was different. There's, again, some stinkers, but this one was awesome, it had little hooks and everything, and by 2001 the little hooks had little spikes on them and it was really cool. Um, so, for some unknown reason we're introduced to Deborah as the um, <coughs> guest ring announcer for the first match, no idea why, she's not got any association with either of these teams, and I think it was just a chance for the King to shout puppies um, over and over and over again. Anyway, she does a really bang up job of doing the announcing uh, as we are introduced to the teams. It is for the Tag Team Championship Chips and it is Edge and Christian, the newly crowned WWF Tag Team Champions, winning the uh, Triple Threat Ladder Match um, at WrestleMania and defeating the Dudley Boys and, as, and the Hardy Boys. Again, we would see them later on in the show. Uh, Road Dog and X-Pac representing DX, they are with Tori, uh, former girlfriend of Kane. I'm guessing that storyline disappeared. Uh, Edge and Christian are your champions and they are their opponents for this one. Um, very screwy crowd to get the action started. Cheering DX as they're coming out and like, DX, DX. And then when they start wrestling, they start booing them and uh, just generally not getting behind anything that they do, which is to me very screwy. And uh, you know, then by the time we get to the next pay per view, which is only like five days after, but it is in, in the UK in London, which I'm going to do the review of as well, because, you know, social isolation and all that. Uh, hopefully by the time this video comes out, we're pretty much out of social, social isolation, but uh, uh, rest, rest assured, Cheap Shot Entertainment has been doing their part for the nation. Um, and that's not the nation of domination. That's just the nation of the UK. Anyway. Uh, screwy finish as well, uh, this is where the Edge and Christian tag team really sort of turn a corner, they become the cocky heels uh, with the five second poses, which I'm very much in favour of, uh, and Christian uses the ring bell to clock X-Pac after he had hit the uh, X-Factor on Edge, Edge gets the pin on X-Pac and then we get the finish. So, Edge and Christian are still the tag team champions. They are moving on to the next show in London, which is Insurrection. I'm not quite sure whether this counts as a pay-per-view for the whole of the year 2000, but it certainly felt like a bit of a pay-per-view, you know. Um, but I must be crazy, like being in Washington DC and then five days later, you're in London. Anyway, uh, Edge and Christian retain. Light Heavyweight Championship on the line next, something that we don't see anymore because Light Heavyweight Championship was very much WWF, whereas the Cruiserweight Championship was very much WCW. And this was uh, to counteract the WCW, 
in a time where WWE or WWF uh, wanted more ratings and they could start buying up more talent and things. And this Scotty Duharty, a WWF um, stalwart, he was in the company way before the wars uh, were happening. And he is current tag team partner with Grandmaster Sexy in Too Cool. Uh, they are very much over with the crowd, but obviously Grandmaster Sexy at this point was having knee surgery and wasn't available. So he has he has picked up the light heavyweight championship a couple of times, lost it to Dean Malenko on the Thursday before on the SmackDown episode to Dean Malenko, the man of a thousand holds. Um, not quite as many holds as Chris Jericho as we would find out later on. Um, but Dean Malenko is the current champion and he retains the championship after a hard fought battle between the two. Really good match actually. Uh, it really showcases what the shorter, lighter guys can do uh, after uh, reversing a top rope attempt at a superplex into sort of like a DDT. I think it was supposed to be a face buster but Scotty rotated a little bit too much. So glad that Dean Malenko is the worker that he is because that could have ended up a lot worse than it looked, but Dean Malenko would retain the championship in what was a decent match. So, um, yeah, Dean Malenko retains. He is the champion within the Radicals. So at this point, the Radicals had sort of not disbanded, but gone their own ways. They'd had um, championship gold between them, um, between all four of them, and uh, they were starting to separate Eddie Guerrero and Mamacita and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we go on to another uh, a tag team match next. Another tag team match. It is the Big Boss Man and Bull Buchanan versus the APA. APA again transitioning into the Acolytes Protection Agency from being the Acolytes uh, in the Ministry of Darkness. And uh, surprisingly, um, they are very over with the crowd, having done what they did in the uh, Ministry of Darkness. You would think that they'd be a bit more heelish, but obviously with Big Boss Man and Bull Buchanan, they are very much the heels. They're wearing black. Um, you know, they look like authority. So we don't like authority. It's the year 2000, and um, Bull Buchanan and Big Boss Man would win. The knife stick of the Big Boss Man would come into play in this one. It wouldn't be a clean victory, um, but hey, you know the APA probably would have done the same thing if they'd have thought of it. So, I don't, you know, I'm not too bothered about that. If the referee doesn't see it, and you get away with it. You know, you've got to cheat if it's worth doing. Um, so, and he uses the knife stick to take out Bradshaw, which then would lead to Bobby Cannon hitting a massive scissor kick off the top rope, which is just phenomenal. This guy is probably 300 pounds and over six feet climbing up to the top, much like Test with his diving elbow. People would, you know, the big guys were doing stuff that the cruiserweights or the light heavyweights would do back then, as much as they, and more than they do now, which is crazy. But uh, yeah, uh, this is a kick from the top rope, picks up the victory for Paul Buchanan and the big boss man. Hardcore Championship on the line next. Crash Holly is the current hardcore champion after losing the title at Wrestlemania to his cousin Hardcore Holly he is, he is defending his championship in a six way match, a six pack challenge, whatever you want to call it whereby Crash has to pin any one of his opponents but his opponents can only pin Crash, I'm not quite sure how that works but it's one fall to a finish so to speak, whereas the Battle Royal at WrestleMania was as many title changes could take place within the 15 minute time limit. He's going against Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, who I think probably should have a tag team championship match, but that went to X Park and Road Dog. Um, and Hardcore Holly, Perry Saturn, the other member of the Radicals, and Taz, uh, the human suplex machine, and has, as we heard on Talk is Cheap. Um, for the Wrestling with Disability podcast, Kyle, classy Kyle Gibson um, did have 
uh, a fascination with Taz and this is how we got into judo. So just a quick heads up there, head over to the podcast and listen to that. Again, another social isolation thing. Um, so Crash Routines, pinning Taz after a headshot with a chair and um, obviously Crash gets beaten off this way, that way and the other way. It doesn't stay in the ring for very long but the pinfall does happen inside the ring. And as the other four guys are beating each other up on the outside, Crash nips in the Al Roy of Hardcore, the Houdini of Hardcore as he is often mentioned as, picks up the victory and retains the championship. So we move on next to a backstage interview with Shane who is the special guest referee for the main event between The Rock and Triple H and uh, he says he's going to call it right down the middle of course he's a McMahon of course he's going to call it right down the middle go on to um, another match now a singles match where the Big Show has sort of turned a corner he wants to start having fun you know he's still the big man he can turn it on as quickly as he starts having fun he comes out dressed as the immortal Hulk Hogan we get the first glimpse of the showster and um, yeah it was all oh, quality time uh, it just shows how much the big show likes to have fun and it is known backstage that he is a prankster he likes to have fun and he's, uh, he's a good laugh but this persona where he came out as someone different imitating someone different every week was absolutely fantastic he goes against Kurt Angle um, who you know cuts a promo on him saying look you know um, why are you doing dressed up like Hulk Hogan you have a big show and you look ridiculous didn't take very long for the um, uh, after a cheap shot um, it didn't take very long for the Big Show to clean up the ring with Kurt Angle. I missed this Big Show because he could still do that now, but he flip-flopped that many times, turned heel and face that many times, that he kind of lost his edge. And at this point he was face, very much face. He'd, he'd been heel at WrestleMania, he'd lost, he then had his little thing with Shane McMahon, and um, got dumped by Shane McMahon as his manager and uh, went on to just have a lot of fun and it was really funny I, I really enjoyed this big show but the thing about this big show is that if you cheap shot him or you know hit him or got him angry he turned the switch and they just clock you choke slam you done and I loved it choke slam from the showster um, uh, after he flicked the switch like I mentioned and uh, the Olympic gold medalist from 1996 uh, gets wiped out completely um, and didn't put up much of a fight either um, to say that Kurt Angle would have the best rookie year in the history of the company uh, this was very much um, one of those things I mean he got put into a tag team match with Kurt Angle this is how the feud went um, for the tag team championships they lost they started a feud uh, Big Show flicks the switch and we got this match Big Show wins uh, Billy Corgan is in the crowd the owner of the NWA as of 2020 and uh, putting on great shows before the coronavirus outbreak he was doing really a bang up job but they have decided obviously that they can't really do the shows without an audience whereas WWE and AEW have got the bigger budget so they can afford to do that obviously with merch sales and things they can put on the shows um, Dudley Boys uh, versus TNA next that's Test and Albert for those who are keeping score and they are out with Trish Stratus uh, Bubba Ray had his face or was going through his phase where we where he would put women through the tables from the top rope and that would be his gimmick for a little while he's got an obsession with Trish he wants to put Trish through a table and I've got to say with the uh, positioning 
Uh, Bob Ray was probably one of the luckiest men of the year 2000 because he did this to Trish, he did this to Lita and um, several others which were mentioned because probably not as delectable um, but yeah um, I, I don't know how I feel about this gimmick but um, yeah it was, it was fun I'll, I'll admit it, I enjoyed I, this, this little gimmick, you know, the boys were putting people through tables anyway, but then they went on to doing it with the women, it's kind of like a transition, uh, and then we get the new women's title and things like that, and we're getting a transition into Trish becoming a superstar, uh, Lisa coming in, Ivory, you know, all those kind of people as well, rather than the cat and Terry. Um, and although the cat was women's champion, and I think Terry was at one point as well, uh, they were not wrestlers, they were there, they were eye candy, and that's what Trish started out as, but she did put in the work, and much like the Bellas, and that's, I uh, respect the Bellas for that, I just don't like the Bellas. Um, but Test wins the champion, wins the match, now, uh, with uh, after he hits Bubba Ray with a big boot um, as uh, Bubba Ray is distracted by Trish Stratus and uh, picks up the victory afterwards after the match Dudley's put Trish through a table after cheap shutting TNA taking them out they uh, Bubba Ray finally gets what he wants out of this feud and puts Trish through the table um, Eddie and Mama Sita next. China arrive from Eddie Guerrero's prom. He has just picked up his uh, high school diploma um, and what did they call it? HSD? Yeah, makes sense. High school diploma. Uh, arrive from the prom. Uh, European Championship is on the line next. They arrive in the Lowrider, and this was the start of Latino Heat's Lowrider phase. Uh, comes in with China, uh, Eddie Guerrero is the current European champion. Um, he fights this whole match wearing his bow tie <laughs> and his tuxedo trousers as well as pointing out that uh, he was wearing white socks uh, with black shoes. Uh, very impressive though, you know, to wrestle with a whole bow tie on. Uh, it's quite funny and um, I say Rios would be with Lita in this one. China and Lita are having a little bit of a thing at this point. Um, obviously Lita very much scared of the Amazon that China was. Uh, Guerrero picks up the victory from this one. An airplane neck breaker spin. Really cool looking move actually, as long as it's done right. SA Rios was really impressive in this match as well. Um, the crowd just weren't into it. You can tell why he got released, but he was released because the crowd weren't into him. They were, he wasn't having an effect on them, whereas Lita did. And, um, you know, she sort of outshone him a little bit. Um, that's not to say S.A. Rios, he put up a good fight in this match, and I really enjoyed this match. It was Eddie Guerrero, uh, master of wrestling versus S.A. Rios. And uh, yeah, really lots of lots of reasonable high flying and things like that going off in this match. And an aeroplane neck breaker, so it wasn't a high flying move that won the match. The coach interviews Triple H next, um, and uh, just a quick question: If you had a platter sat in front of you of vegetables and things like that, would you include broccoli and cauliflower? Because one thing I noticed about this platter is that there was broccoli and cauliflower there just to pick up and eat. I don't like broccoli at the best of times, let alone raw. Um, you know, mm, mm. Uh, Intercontinental Championship up for grabs next. It is Chris Benoit versus Chris Jericho. They are in the height of their feud uh, for this one. And uh, yeah. Chris Benoit is the current Intercontinental Champion and Chris Jericho wants to get that championship uh, for himself, obviously. Um, Benoit wins by disqualification after a really good match, actually. 
Um, Benoit hits Jericho with the title under the referee's nose, but as Benoit is going to finish Chris Jericho, Chris Jericho has the title, holds it right up in the air, doesn't even sort of hold it over his chest or something, holds it right up in the air so the referee can absolutely see it. The right call was made by referee Tim White here as Chris Jericho is disqualified for using the title belt. Um, and uh, after the match, Jericho snaps, puts the uh, Lion Tamer, the walls of Jericho, on Tim White, and no doubt he would get a massive fine for that. We're going on to the main event match now. It is the WWF Championship, the WF, WWF Champion, The Rock, picking up the title. Um, Actually, no, he wasn't the WWF champion at this point. Triple H was still the champion. Special guest referee is Shane McMahon. Uh, the Rock is supposed to be coming down with Stone Cold. Stone Cold is in The Rock's corner. We don't see him until a bit later. And Triple H is in uh, the ring with Vince McMahon in his corner um, as we play out the match. Now, it's a standard Triple H Rock match. It's really good. They have really good chemistry with each other. You can tell they don't like each other in kayfabe. And Vince McMahon obviously does get involved. Shane gets taken out. Um, as, and the Stooges then run down to replace them. Two referees in one match. Um, still no sign of Stone Cold at this point. The glass shatters. Austin does what Austin does. Comes in with a chair, clocks everyone over the head, gives the stunner, gives a stunner there, gives a stunner there, hits everyone apart from The Rock, giving The Rock a chance to pick up the victory. Uh, Linda takes out Stephanie McMahon um, and um, the referee Earl Hebner is ready to go in. There's a spine buster and a people's elbow on Triple H and The Rock finally reaches his destination of the WWE WWF Championship back in 2000 and claims his prize the WWF Champion, the big gold belt that was in the um, year 2000, the Winged Eagle, it's just a bigger version of the Winged Eagle, beautiful championship, new WWF champion, and that is how we finish the show with The Rock standing tall, doing his corner thing, doing The Rock as The Rock does, and uh, yeah, everyone's happy, everybody happy. Um, really good pay per view, actually, I've really enjoyed this one, um, and it's getting better as we go throughout the year. Um, WrestleMania 2000 was great, um, backlash really good as well, some better undercard matches and the championship match was brilliant, it was the height of you know McMahon feuds and things and the Steph McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, the McMahon Helmsley era and uh, really good, I really enjoyed it, really really enjoyed it, anyway um, yeah I'd say go and check this one out, it's really fun, um, you know good 20 years ago from the date this video has been released so if you you enjoy your old school wrestling I would go and watch this one. Uh, anyway, I've been your host Luke. You can click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to know when we upload new content to the channel as well as joining us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. You should know what you're doing by now people. You know, that just helps us out, it's always nice to know when we've got a new subscriber to the channel and things like that, so uh, you're on Cheap Shot Nation, I've been your host Luke, and I'll see you next time, goodbye. <laughs>